Good morning, everyone. It is June 30th. Where did this month go, right? Wednesday, June 30th. We'll get a couple people on here and we will get going. John just panicked because he went to make sure that all our streams were available and YouTube had knocked us off. So hopefully he solved that and we're back on that. So today, in a little bit, I'm going to show a video that Lilo and I made uh, via um, recording on labeling stuff in your studio. And she has some really cl super clever ideas. And of course, this is above and beyond my brother, P-Touch. Somebody asked exactly the model, and I believe I went to Amazon, and it was like Amazon's Choice or something like that. And I think it was about 20 bucks or something. I mean, it is, I am in labeling heaven, heaven. So, hey, everybody. Yeah, YouTube is up. Thanks, Hillary. Morning, Rondi. So in going through my stuff, I have I discovered something from the very first BOM that TQS did, and it was by Sue Garman. Um, this is <laughs> this is how far I got on it. I almost got rid of this, and then I thought, what are you thinking? I'm going to part of its applique by hand. <laughs> um, but I'm going to finish it on my sewing machine, and I'm going to make a pillow out of it. Isn't that cute? That, that, this one with Sue was just so popular. You can see our TQS star in the background. And, I mean, this is beautiful. I don't quite know where I'm going to house it, but I'm pretty sure I'm going to make a pillow out of it and put it somewhere. But I could also see it with some stars around it or something like that. I, I don't know. Now... As you know, when you're a subscribing member, you get the BOM for free. And what's the problem, John? Frame it for the warehouse. Frame it for the warehouse? That you just said that or someone else said that? Oh, <laughs> frame it for the warehouse. Um, he just interrupted me. Oh, yeah. When you are a subscribing member, which I know most of you are, you do get uh, the block of the month for free. And this year is Color My World, and it is beautiful. And I believe in today's newsletter, we have a wool rendition of it that one of you is doing. And the thing is, is we, we get it for the year, for those of you that are new, and we license it for the year and then it goes back to the quilt maker. So like that first year, that pattern, I think Sue, you could still get it from Sue Garman's family, but I think it's gonna run you 80 or 90 bucks. So for the pattern alone, not to mention the shows, the education, the training and all that, um, you get a BOM. That said, make sure you always print it out, always, because sometimes computer crash or put it on a thumb drive or something like that. And I always tell people, if you're going to print out the pattern, get yourself a binder and just put it in it. I mean, Sue's patterns could run, you know, like almost a hundred pages and the instruction was fabulous. And again, Barbara Black, thank you for shepherding us through this year's BOM. Okie dokie. So thank you, Miss Lois in Michigan. I'm all, the other one's in my bedroom. I'm almost done with it. Uh, you're from Michigan, so you get Door County. Um, the first one is almost like a travel log, but what's so cool, I mean, it's a quilter thing story, and it's by uh, Anne Hazelwood. She's done a lot of quilty books, but she's doing things on Door County. And, and it's almost like I could taste it and feel it and be there. So if any of you have been to Door County and you're a quilter, I think you might like these two books. Um, the first one's The Quilters of, of Door County. So thank you so much. That was just such a great surprise, Lois. Really appreciate. The other thing I want to share with you, oh, is that um, I'm almost done. Where the quilt is hanging, oop, right there, there's going to be a back bookcase. I wanted to show you a picture of it. Bill sent a picture of it from his cabinetry shop. This thing is huge. I think he said he was going to put a bocce, a bowling alley on top of it or a bocce court or something like that. So I'm very excited about that. Tons of drawers. The two bottom drawers in the center, I made that size so it could hold like my AccuQuilt Go and all the dies and everything. I mean, I really thought this out. And then on each side, two bookshelves will run up. So I have... I have more storage than I'll ever use. I shouldn't have just said that. Knock on wood. 
right? Um, so the other thing I want to share with you, this is super uber fun. I have, um, okay, there are six women that get together. That's seven. There are six. And they are historians. Uh, one is Barbara Black. No, I'm still Barbara Black. Barbara Brackman. We love her book. Um, the other, the, uh, Julie Silver's in it. And Julie's more of a collector. And then the other four women, I don't believe I've met, but I know one of them works for DAR and curates their uh, collection of quilts. And what they did, and they are continuing to do, is they meet once a month and they do the six know-it-alls. I love this. And they they take a subject and then one of them has, you know, each of them takes a subject. So the current one um, is, or well, that they've just put up that you can purchase now on, uh, on uh, Vimeo. I think John's going to put a link up there. Um, six myths explored in the episodes was, did the uh, quilts assist on the other Underground Railroad? That was really interesting. Um, improv, you know, who really, where did that originate? Uh, was quilting really a common pastime or necessity in colonial America? Is seedy batting a thing and does it help date a quilt? Did or do the Amish and others make intentional mistakes in their quilts? And machine quilting didn't happen until latter 20th century. Or did it? So you can get on. They've got a couple free ones on YouTube. But, oh, I almost ended this broadcast. That would not be good. Um, I lit, It was a two-hour thing. It was fascinating because lest we forget where we have come from and the history behind us as quilters. So check out the six know-it-alls. I just love that. Okay, then Bonnie... What else do we have here? Bonnie asked, uh, when I quilt uh, by machine, what do I use for thread? Well, as I've mentioned before, always, always in my sewing machine, you will find the 80 weight in the bobbin. Always. I don't care what. And when it gets to the top, really, it's what you want to use. I typically and often will use the 80 weight on top also for quilting because I come from the school of where I don't want to see the threads. I want it to really push back, okay? And so, um, the, you know, there's, there's you, it's the consideration that you want. So you just have to stitch on your machine and see. So no, do I always put my 60 weight on top? Heck no, mm -mm. no way, I don't. Okay, and speaking of that, thank you, Patricia, for putting up Allison Glass's Kaleidoscope Stripes and Plaids, Hawthorne Supply, uh, Supply Company, Portsmouth, Port, Portsmouth Fabrics in New Hampshire. And also, uh, Betty told me that they've got 19 of, no, I'm sorry, I got that backwards, 17 of the 19 prints at um, Gossip, Gossipum. Gossipum Quilt Shop in Washington, Issaquah, Washington. Gossipum. I I kind of I kind of love that name because <laughs> I could read a lot into it. So so yeah, if you want to make it bigger, there are places you can get this um, spinning spools, uh, out, um, Andover Madra plaids and stripes are beautiful. So let's see what you have been up to, Sue Rapp who I've known for, gosh, see what, 20 years or something. She finally got the quilting done on this. And she said she really procrastinated around the flowers because she knew what she was getting into. But it really looks good, Sue. Congratulations. And I so look forward to seeing you soon. Um, and then we have Susan and her spools. She said, forget the flowers, forget the... Um, um, the other idea is she put hearts on it and I see that you really truly just finished it. In fact, I think I got this image this morning because you've got the multi-striped uh, binding. Good job. Okay. Gail, Gail, cats in my studio or sewing room. <laughs> it took me a minute to see them. They're adorable. Absolutely adorable. And I'm wondering with that bottom, I just seen this right now, that bottom flower, if you're going to just chop it off in the binding or you haven't stitched it down yet, that's a conundrum. <laughs> but whatever you do, it's going to be great. And I love the background. 
I love these show and tells, you guys. Okay, Christy, you can see, um, okay, Christy, this is absolutely fabulous, but what I want to say is this, more importantly, um, she sent me a little letter, and I saw the binding, and I'm going, yay, she did that binding, but then I saw the backing, and I'm like going, wow. I mean, without even reading your letter, and then I went and read it, I thought, how is that not coming through the white? Because whenever I have white on a quilt, I am really careful. Um, yeah, it could have some sort of product in there, but man, that scares me. And it was um, fabric that she, her mom brought back from Hawaii, not 100% cotton, who cares? But then I saw the magic words in there. She used two layers of batting. I believe she said warm and natural, and that stuff is pretty dense. So if you, and, and heavy too, if you ever really want to put something crazy on the back, consider the show through. And uh, you nailed it, Christy. Thank you. Thank you for showing that. And thank you for taking the time to write because that was the first thing that went through my mind was, how come that's not showing through? Okay, then we have Debbie. Let's see. Oh, Debbie's, I kind of blew up a little bit because I wanted you to see the quilting on it. Uh, very interesting. And then the thing I noted on the schools, that almost looks like what Connie showed the last Friday. So I don't know if you were inspired by that or you'd already done that, but it looks great. And then, oh, I'm, yeah, no, that's how you did all the spools. I'm looking, I'm feeling like I might be seeing other things, but uh-uh. And I got to get mine over to uh, Diane Schweikert. Okay, Kathy. Okay, Kathy did not want to do the applique. So she took it to her embroidery module. And the thing that I think is kind of fun here, first of all, how you photographed it in front of the spools on top, which you pointed out to me, but also she added a little bit of white on the top and the bottom of each spool. So it made it even more spoolish, for, for lack of better words. Okie doke. And then Audrey from Scotland. Audrey, um, I thank you so much for sharing this. It, it's uh, I like the way kind of the applique went all the way around. You didn't have the naked spots. And Audrey wrote and said, thank you for TQS because um, it's a great way to learn for people worldwide. And she's absolutely right. And then I shared with Audrey from Scotland that I have been there once. I did not see the Loch Ness Monster, but I did frequent the pubs and that uh, my mom was 100% Scottish and we wore kilts when we were kids and um, for dress up. And she was of the Wallace clan that married into the Telford clan. All right. So, okay. Go, go sip PM. Go sip PM. Go sip. Carol saying go sip PM. I'm calling it Gossipium. <laughs> Gossipium. <laughs> it, I, I actually went and Googled it and it looks like a fabulous shop. Thank you. All right. So what I would like to do right now is go to Lilo. And I think she'll have some ideas on labeling your stuff that you have not thought of. That's why we love her. Lilo, you're back again. Yay. Yay, I'm getting ready to come to your neck of the woods. Oh, actually, I you, will have already been there. You have already been there. And after seeing what you're going to be presenting today, uh-oh. But anyways, you're going to talk about labeling. And I, I want to start with why is that even important? Pitch me. Well, okay, so the reason that I thought of it is that we had a member write to us and say, I have a ton of books. How do I label my spiral-bound books? And that got me to thinking there's a lot of stuff that is little or that we overlook and it drives me crazy. And so I'm assuming I'm not the only one. So spiral bound is one, which we'll get to, but then there are other things that let's say you have multiple drawers of things and the drawers are all the same color, same size. You know, that is another thing that I can't stand trying to figure out, well, what is in here because I can't see into it. So I thought let's kind of cover some basic inexpensive ways to label the things that you got if it's driving you crazy and you can't remember what's in in a basket or a drawer or what have you 
But you have yeah. to understand, people like me, <laughs> yeah. I know exactly what cupboard it's crammed in. So you're, I feel sorry for you and Robin, but you're okay. getting you're getting me thinking, and I you've got some really great ideas. So uh, let's start with the first image you sent, okay? Right. And so these are just some really simple ways that you can label things. So there's, uh, you know, a hang tag with a marker. Uh, easily you can get that anywhere. The yellow one is actually a key, key hang tag. But, you know, we can just put a label on that and mark whatever the item is. Then there's a little ring tab. And those come in packets of 50 to 100 at the office supply store. They're great. They have a little paper tag that you can, again, write the um whatever the information is on one side. And then at the office supply store, little pull off stick tags, either you hand write them or do go fancy and do something like a labeling machine. I mean, so those are really basic ways to be able to put labels on the things that you've, that you've got that really frustrate you. Yeah. Okay. But what about, I'm going to go back to this again. Okay. I succumb. I, I purchased a P touch for your visit here. <laughs> oh my goodness. What about okay. that? Libby will be okay, proud. Well, well, I will say that this I've I've gone without a peach touch until just this last year. But I will say that once I st started using it, it was pretty darn addictive, you know, to type in the little type in the words, you can have different kinds of font and different sizes, which is also nice. And then it just literally spits out the little label on the other end and you just peel it apart and stick it on whatever you want. Um, so that I will say is is great if you have a lot of things. I was reorganizing a spice drawer and putting the spices in little cans that were vertical so I couldn't see what was inside. That worked out really well. But I am not as obsessed and labeling like Libby Lehman, who loved everything labeled, as we all know. You know, everything, even the light switches had labels on them. No, but it's saying her husband had something that said Lester across his head. Probably, yeah. <laughs> Probably. Yes. <laughs> okay. Well, Robin is fancy dancy. Yeah. Okay. But see, again, that's pretty simple. That is, you know, you've got some markers, you've been taking some calligraphy classes or learned lettering. Those are just really simple. I mean, index cards, decorated, slap them on the side of your shoe box, makes it really easy to see what you've got inside. Yeah. She's, she's kind of on the Libby spectrum. Kind of. She does say she <laughs> likes to have labels and she likes to see things on the inside. Right. Where right. you get all hidden away in the depths of, you know, the darkness. <laughs> oh, I bought that? Wait, I know. Okay, here we go. Right, right. Right. And then here's another, here's another example, you know, again with a label machine um, on a shoebox kind of an item. And it just makes it really simple to see, especially if you have a whole variety of different things that are all in the same kind of container, like the shoe boxes, so that you know, okay, one's got acrylic paint, the other one has uh, silk uh, uh, items, we've got flowers, you know, whatever it is that you've got. Really, really simple. Uh, and they also peel off pretty simply. So if you change your mind or you don't use that stuff anymore, you can reuse the shoe box and put a different kind of a label on it. And who's, whose room is this? Um, this is in Lauren Volchek. She was in um, on two of our shows that we've had. And she does a lot of mixed media. So she has a lot, again, of little things, little bits of this, some yarn, little bits of paint. And all that stuff becomes really problematic when you're trying to keep it all t together and figure out where it is. So I want to back up. So it's not like taking a bumper sticker off a car when you want to take it off. No, no. It's usually pretty, pretty straightforward. Okay. Yeah. With cool. the labelers. Now, right. this one, you sent me this of Annie Smith's and I almost, I burst out laughing and I thought, actually, this is brilliant. Right. Don't you think? I mean, I'm not crazy about having labels on the outside of things because it kind of reminds me of being in preschool and I'm not quite there yet. Um, but I love the idea of having a label right across the top of the drawer so yes. that you just have to pull it open and then you can see, well, this is what I've got in here. And then the next one down below, I've got something else. So that I think is really another simple idea. And you can close the drawers and everything is still really nice and clean. I like that a lot. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Now, this is actually uh, coming up to your fabric storage, right? 
This is in my new closet. Well, my new closet arrangement. Um, I went with the um, storage system from the container store. And yes, they have a tag that you can buy and a packet uh, so you can put your labels on it. But I really wanted something much simpler and a lot smaller because I didn't need a big label. And so I simply use those same little round paper tags. They come with a little metal ring, but it was hard to feed it through the, the mesh wire. So, you know, I love zip ties, four inch zip ties. Let's see. The bag comes with about a thousand of these in here. So again, you've got a lot to do. And what I just simply did was just pushed it through the little wire, got the little um, uh, hang tag, and then just close it on. And what I did on the actual, you can show the picture again. What I did to make it simple, again, I don't need the word. I see that in that basket, there's orange fabric and red fabric. And then the basket below is purple fabric. And that's for me to know that's Japanese fabric. I know it looks like purple and blue, but it's Japanese fabric. And that's all I need. I didn't need a big um, something saying on the side. No, no. And a question for you is this, is um, where, do you, where do you get things without spending an arm and a leg like the... Um little roundy Ziploc. The little round ones. These are simply from the, this is from Office Depot. Okay. So your office supply store um, has a section with labeling. So oh. they sell, they sell all kinds of things. They have hang tags. They have little round ones. They even sell these in different colors. So if you want green, yellow, whatever, um, you can find them in the art store, the hobby store. Uh, if you don't like the rings, like I said, just pull the little ring off and then use what a zip tie or ribbon, whatever you want. Okay. Uh, okay. That's a really simple way of doing that as well. I like that yeah. a lot. See, my baskets are a larger weave so I can see in them and, and I, yours, you, it's kind of, you get a suggestion, but right there with your Japanese fabric, um, I yeah. thought it was blue, but you have your little secret code and there you go. Yes. Right. And my baskets are also above my head, so I can't look into them either. I mean, some of them. So I wanted do you to do get about that. Well, the little hang tag is just right there. So but I, I mean, to get them it. out. I mean, are they on separate shelves or are they stacked up? How are they put in there? There, there there's there's uh, six. I believe there's six on each side. And so what I did is I put the fabrics I go to the least, mm -hmm. the highest up. So the ones I know that I'm going to go to all the time, um, I put more towards the center. I tend to go with orange and green and purple and red. And black and white tends to be less often, so it's going up at the top. That's, That's interesting I, because my, mine, aren't, mine don't go that high, but it's interesting because at the bottom are ones I don't use much, and it's black and green. Oh. So, you know. Oh, yeah. And I also got myself a little step stool. I have a little footstool, so it's right there. I can pull it out and get stuff out. Cool. Yeah. You know what's so great is that I said to Robin, are you looking forward to coming? And she goes, yes. And I'm like, I know. Ah, are you looking forward to coming? Yeah. Oh, well, yeah. We've been we've been already scheming. We've already been talking. <laughs> yeah. What are we going to do in Alex's room? So this is the, other, this is the thing that, that kind of got me going on this. Somebody wrote, and I'm sorry, I cannot remember her name, uh, but she was saying spiral books. And, you know, when I started looking in my stash, there's a lot of books that are on spiral spiral that I have. Mm -hmm. And those are really hard because they're not necessarily all together and you don't know, well, is this all quilting? Is this my paint books? Is this my drawing books? What have you? And so I started looking around again and you know, here we are again, the little round tag, mm -hmm. write it on both sides, string it through some of the rings. That's a super easy one um, to do. Then the other one, because I've been doing a changing um, over in my studio, I have these hideous old, um, what are they called? Mini blinds. This is simply old mini blinds that you can cut. Hold on, let me get right here. Can you see? You can see, yeah. Um, and you can punch a hole in one end. With just and a then hole I puncher? Would, with a paper puncher? Just, just, a, hole, just a hole puncher. Huh. I would suggest, because the mini blinds come in different sizes, um, I would say trim them down a little bit and then write whatever your message is. And then you want to punch a hole on the other side and you just simply cut it. So Lee, and though, again, was, I thought those things are metal. Are there, are, are yours plastic? Mine are plastic, but they don't work with the metal ones as well. well I don't and know then all you do metal. is you just, then you just take that. Um, oh, you mean your mini blinds are metal. 
Yeah. Well, I don't have them, but that's how I think of them. I didn't think of them as plastic. So if you're in a junk store, pay attention and get plastic. Right. Or you're, you're going by a, uh, you know, somebody's having a yard sale and they're getting rid of their mini blinds, buy them because yeah. those are so great. And so then all you do is you take again, that little four inch, uh, zip tie and you just feed it through the ring on one side and then tie it tight and snip off the end. And it is great because then you can really see, let me hold it up right here. You can see when it's sitting on a shelf. Whoa, turn it this way. There we it's go. It's good. Lilo, does it affect you opening up the book? It. Open that book up. I want to see. Does it does it affect that? I'm putting you on the spot here, lady. Oh. Nope. Okay. Okay. So it lays really nice and flat. And I noticed I had a bunch of spiral bound books. So that for me was, oh, and that's inexpensive. And I before I threw all my shades out for somebody else, I took a couple of uh, the uh, <laughs> <laughs> well, see, what I love is that you, when you approach things, you approach it, number one of, I don't want to spend an arm and a leg here. So what can we do, right? Right. And if you've already got some of this stuff around the house, you know, you just, like, I literally just took the blinds down about two weeks ago and I thought, oh, I'm saving a couple of these okay. um, to use. I thought it was such a clever idea and it really doesn't cost them a lot. Now you All right. So You've gotten into crochet big time, and um, you're dangling that uh, carrot in front of me. So we got to talk about yarn. Yes. Okay. So I know you, when you start a project, uh, you just keep going, and you don't ever have to lay it aside, and you you, you work on it until you get finished, right? Right. Nothing ever gets in the way of you having to set it down for three or four months. Never. Uh, well, in my life, that happens fairly often, and it's not good to have knitting needles or your crochet hook in your project for long periods of time because it will stretch your yarn and so they have stitch markers but my problem isn't so much about losing the stitch mine is trying to remember what hook was i using in this project or what needles because you more than likely don't have multiples of the same hook or needles i mean you might but i don't and uh and so then i couldn't remember oh great now what size hook am I, did I use? So this is simply something you can make from just simple jewelry findings from the hobby store. Um, you buy, you can buy some beads that come in either letters uh, or numbers. And for me, this is a number four hook. So that makes it really easy. And then it's just this little lobster claw. And you just, with a couple of pairs of needle uh, nose pliers, you can fix your own marker that you just attach to your project with where the loop is coming out or just anywhere on it just as a reminder oh this was a size four hook or this is size seven needles that i used in this um in this project if you have to set it aside for a while if it's a knitting project you want to string some other yarn through the the loops that were on your knitting needles and that way it's relaxed it's not being stressed on the on the stitches and you can t pull that needle out but then you got to remember what the needle size is. So that's again another simple little thing um, to keep you keep, that keeps you from going crazy. And then okay. the last thing, go yeah. Ahead. And I, I love this because I'm all Cindy Needham stocky right now, right? Right, right. Okay, so you've got all those lovely little hankies. You've got all those projects that you're working on and um how to store them when you're not working on them like maybe you have to give them a break because you're looking for something else to add to it um ideally you don't want to keep it in a hoop the whole time or uh, stretched out or laying out you've got maybe some old cotton pillowcases from sheets that you're no longer using put them in that and then again just a real simple tag to let you know if you've got it sitting out on a shelf uh, it keeps the dust out. It keeps light out, and you can just mark on it whatever it is and change it out as you as you want. So, again, really simple little things to keep you from going crazy. And you know what? <laughs> I um, just took a pile of pillowcases to Goodwill <laughs> ah! because you always end up with ten thousand pillowcases. Right. So this is a great way to use all those old pillowcases. Up. Put all your your vintage pieces in there, your, um, especially things like with ribbon and beads, all that kind of stuff that you're doing with all those little girls. 
um, when you don't, when you're not able to finish the whole thing, it's a nice way to keep it protected. Yeah. Um, you didn't, you didn't, um, give me an image for this, but do you have any way particularly that you store like lace or would you again, put it in a cloth bag and then just label it like that? Yeah, I do. I have them right now in a, in a box, but I've gotten so much of it lately that the pillowcases are easier and, and better. Um, and it keeps yeah. it cleaner too. Yeah. Well, I yeah. think the other thing too is that I would like your opinion on this. I think the last thing you want to do is put it in some sort of plastic container because it can't breathe. Is that true? Correct. Correct. Yeah. Because think of it as if you can't breathe in it, then your linens can't breathe in it okay. either. Okay. Um, and you also don't necessarily want to put it in in um, you know a, a chest like wood either. That's another thing that people think if you're going to put it in i would say archival paper archival boxes especially if it's something that's going to be for a long time um you definitely want to protect it so why um, not why not like a hope chest uh it depends on the kind of wood sometimes the wood leeches Peter chest that's one thing uh, but you don't necessarily want the, those things, the textiles, right up against the wood either. So I would say in some kind of a cloth in the cedar chest. Okay. Oh. Yeah. Yeah. Well, this is and good. not downstairs in the moldy, moldy, cold, damp, wet basement either, exactly. or in the attic where it's 125 degrees. I like the idea of don't put it anywhere that you don't want to be. Right. Right. You know? Yeah. So Lilo, this is really good stuff. And I so appreciate that you take time, um, you know, to hang with us. And I've got to throw this out every single time that you are doing guild lectures and you mm -hmm. can customize it to what the guild is, correct? Correct. Yes. I'm getting ready to in next month, talk to a guild in the Tucson area and they have a lot of snowbirds. So they have, you know, a studio in one area and they either have a cabin or maybe they go on the road and they've been asked asking me okay what do you suggest what should somebody think about when they have two studio spaces whether one's on wheels or whether they're um, two different plate locations yeah and you've yeah. asked me about how i do it with the cabin it's not i just shove junk in the closet and call it a day of course it's me <laughs> shut the door <laughs> because i don't really okay, have a dedicated so place <laughs> Yeah, so when Robin and I come, we're going to have the hidden camera and we're going to do the real Alex <laughs> studio organizing. I'll tell you what, I promise you I'll have clean underwear on. Past that, forget it. <laughs> oh, no, I'm sure it's going to be great. We're really excited and looking at putting the place together. Yeah. yeah that you will have a time in there. I, I just, I, I, I so appreciate how you think and your sharing, your willingness. And everybody, if you have questions for Lilo, um, where could they send them to you specifically? Because this helps us gather what we know are your issues in your space. So where, how could they get hold yeah. of you? Um, they could write to either my work email, which is lilo at the quilt show.com, or they could write to my business, my personal business, which is lilo at lilo so And that's also either the, one of the, how they it's how they can, excuse me, that's how they can get hold of you to do a lecture too via Zoom. Absolutely. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. They can do that. Yeah. Okay. Well, so, uh, get ready. Robin and I are coming. <laughs> and I think the weather's cooperating. Yay. So, okay. Well, I'm hoping it's cooler because it's huh? hot here. I, it's, it's, I'm hoping it's cooler. It is right now. Oh, this weekend was brutal. Um, today it's 85. It doesn't get better than that. And dry. Oh, okay. It's not and that dry. Cool. It's not that cool. Oh, oh yeah. Okay. okay. Sounds lovely. Okay. All right. Thank you. Thank you. And we'll see you in a couple days. All right. Bye bye. Oh, bye bye. Isn't she great? I mean, really. Uh, please do if you have questions on how to solve things, <clears throat> get it to me, get it to Lilo because she really, her brain is just going. So yay on that. Again, to get hold of me, it's A-L-E-X-A-N-D-R-S-N at gmail.com. And quickly, Deb, yes, the container store is where you get those. They are, those uh, stacked wire drawers, they are ghastly expensive, in my humble opinion. I have collected mine over years and they don't break down, unlike the plastic ones that will break. They are superior. So when you get them, just 
take a deep breath and know you're making an investment that will last longer than you, okay? And um, then another gal asked about boxes. You know, I don't know about cardboard. What I would do is I would Google, I wish Lila were on, I would Google, um, do, does cardboard boxes cause damage to textiles and see what comes up? So don't forget the six know-it-alls. And also, Friday, uh, we did a video that we will be sharing with you. And uh, it's Lilo taking us through the studio. Again, it's not finished. I'm still waiting for this part back here to get done, but we're on the home stretch. And she came up with some really clever things for me to help get organized. And the other thing I want to say about that is I think one of the reasons I have been not motivated besides the pandemic and all that, this place was a mess. I mean, just a mess. And like the other day, I go, oh, I need this. Bam, there it is. Oh, I need that. Bam, there it is. So it really does make a difference. And since they've left, I have another horn table that I completely cleaned out. And I actually have four empty drawers. I just, you know. So, okay, so Debbie just said, I heard that cardboard attracts bugs. Yeah, that's the thing. I don't know. You need to Google it. That's for sure. But I do know it needs to breathe. I gave a, I made a hoopa for my son's wedding to Shelly. And it was in Santa Barbara outside next to the ocean. And, and when the coordinator or whatever, when they got married under the hoopa, and then we went inside, they shoved it in the plastic bag. And I borrowed it back for the magazine five years later and mold was on it. And there's nothing you can do about it. Fortunately, it's not so bad that uh, the girls can't use it down the road, but you've got to be able to breathe. I, I love that tip of Lilo's. So again, send us questions, okay? And um, uh, as far as I'm, I mean, this part of my lives could go on for a while. Okay, so fair warning, this Friday, I'm going to, we're going to do the little tour that we did, and then next week, I'm taking off because Monday is 4th of July, and in America, that's a big deal. It's probably my um, second favorite holiday after Thanksgiving, but then uh, I'm going to be in Sue Spargo's class there uh, for three days. Uh, virtually from the Sisters Outdoor Quilt so Show. So I'm uh, Quilters Affair. So I'm very excited about that. It's time for me to take some classes. All right. Sue Spargo, got to be a little jealous there. Let's see. Okay. Paul says cardboard also draws moisture. You know, I, I think with just those two things that were said there, along with any wood based product, can has acid. Stay away from cardboard boxes. And also, don't put them like in the boxes I'm storing stuff in that has a snap lid on it that's all plastic. So take care of your fabrics and they'll take care of you. Okay, that's corny. All right, see you Friday. I'm really excited about the video we'll be sharing with you. Have a good day and stay cool because, man, we are under something else here in the United States and probably up in Canada too. Bye-bye, guys. I appreciate you.